We have our next speaker for the evening, Ms. Sirisha Boruganti. She's based out of India and is responsible for the operation of MasterCard's India Center. MasterCard houses one of its largest technology hubs across the globe with nearly 1,800 people here, focusing on the development of various technology solutions for global markets. In her role as head of architecture, she and her team focus on linking business strategy to the technology roadmap, enabling MasterCard to deliver strategic value propositions to its customers. Some of the key initiatives being driven by her today is the work MasterCard is doing around the cloud, data management, and technology consulting. Ms. Boruganti will be speaking on how the fintech industry is reinventing financial services. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Ms. Siri Shah Boruganti. Firstly, I'd like to congratulate CNBC and uh, you know, the Rubik team for organizing this particular event. I think it's just amazing that they've brought a number of us together this evening uh, to go through what I believe is probably one of the most innovative domains uh, that I have seen so far. I do not belong to the banking industry or segment, but what I've been seeing here over the last few years is it has been tremendously innovative, and I'll talk about some of those as, uh, you know, as we go through this particular session in terms of what I see as uh, you know, key initiatives and also with specific reference uh, to a company like MasterCard and what we are trying to do in this particular space to stay ahead of the curve and how we are leveraging what we call fintech and this whole fintech revolution, not just in India, but I'll talk a little about you know, the global markets and, 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 and what we're trying to do there. Just before that, uh, a little about the role that I play. I think Priyanka has already talked about it. Uh, I'm responsible for architecture. It's really about connecting a number of verticals and horizontals that we have within the company, be it our you know, core payments, uh, you know, what we're doing around digital, what we're trying to do uh, as a company in the processing space, and so on and so forth. Uh, and the charter that me and my team have is to really see how we are able to innovate and how we are able to uh, you know, create faster, quicker, better payments. And for us, the moment of truth really is, as we're operating you know, across 25,000 banks across the globe, as well as you know, in 215 countries, the moment of truth really is when any of you travel you know, to whichever part of the world, take out your card, and it is supposed to work. Right? So that's really the moment of truth that, that, that we aspire for. And what we realize as we kind of, and, and just, to, just, just to talk about the size of transactions, right? MasterCard uh, as a company uh, deals with close to about 16 petabytes of data. Uh, you know, and on a yearly basis, we, we, we deal with about close to 52 billion transactions that happen on our network. So it's a highly, uh, you know, a very intelligent edge network that we've set up, a uh, huge number of transactions and constantly increasing. And, 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 and as all of you know, with whatever's happened in India around demonetization, India, China, biggest markets that we're trying to focus at this point in time uh, as a company. Right. So with that said, uh, what to me, and I think Manavjit explained what financial, uh, you know, uh, the fintech world and financial technology world is all about. To me, it's a very simplistic definition in terms of uh, it is really about the innovative usage of technology in the design and delivery of services. Right. And how does this happen? I mean, I think each one of us has been seeing this in our day-to-day uh, -day lives and with demonetization, what has really happened. Uh, I think a lot of the customer usage, customer experience is leading to innovation. And when I look at some of the uh, you know, companies and some of the areas that we're looking at, uh, a simple thing like cash on delivery, right? Today I see companies which have created certain solutions in terms of uh, delaying or authorizing now and delaying settlement. Because, you know, and I think some of these have a very regional flavor, right? I mean, in India, we'd like to see a product and we'd still like to have the right of refusal uh, for a product. So, I see a lot of companies in that space, and I think that's really interesting. Uh, and, and we, as an organization, do look for every opportunity that, you know, every transaction where we're able to, 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 to make the dollar, really. And I think in that 
uh, you know, COD is one of those areas that we cannot uh, really ignore as a company. So that's really to say how usage pattern and usage is actually uh, pushing innovation, right? And I think uh, with the mobile devices coming in with, with the iPhone, uh, you know, it, it's, it, it's just given us or taken us to the next level in terms of technology, right? And uh, so, so there, so there is a lot that is that is happening here. And uh, you know, uh, as a company, I think we have a couple of challenges that we look at when we look at the Indian market and what's happened here, or in China, for instance. Right? We see a lot of the on-soil requirements coming in. So there are regulatory requirements that governments are imposing. Uh, we see us having to collaborate with the industry. So. I mean, what I was really trying to drive at is we're not able to do this alone by ourselves because there are, uh, there are the global requirements and there are very region-specific requirements and we constantly look for collaboration in niche technology areas of companies that can actually help us in this space. So I think it's really, uh, you know, it's no, no, no longer going to be this one company domination, whether it is Master or Visa. I think it's all about how the ecosystem can develop and how we can you know, along with the ecosystem go forward in this particular space. And I think uh, that's where the fintech, to me, uh, the fintech companies, to me, play this, this huge role. And whether they're coming in from startups, it's, whether it's university startup, I've seen a number of these interesting ideas, whether it is chatbots, you know, uh, to kind of really pick up those early calls and, you know, be able to answer customers, whether it is... Uh, you know, uh, the, yeah, he, he talked about the robos, right? I mean, how, how some of these are helping look at data. I mean, one of the big problems that I and my organization actually look at is data. And I told you about the volumes of data we operate on. I think that's one of information management and data is one of the other big problems that we're trying to look at, saying, you know, we're sitting on this gold mine of information and every consumer, and how are we able to understand the consumer better? Are we able to, uh, you know, we, ha we have an offer called the priceless cities. I don't know how many of you, uh, you know, have seen the MasterCard offering, but it's really about uh, the moment, you know, you, 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 for example, you're going on a holiday, you're on a flight, uh, we use your biometric or whatever to kind of understand who you are as an individual and really push a lot of, uh, you know, offers your way in terms of what are the, which, which is the place that you're going to, what are the places to see in, you know, at the destination that you're going. Uh, you know, what are the avenues for you to, uh, whether it is to eat or whatever, just really trying to make the experience very individualistic and very interesting, uh, you know, from a consumer or standpoint. So I think there is a lot that is, uh, you know, that is happening where we're trying to personalize experiences based on the data that we have, right? And, uh, you know, not just about, I mean, we've talked a lot about the consumer, but I think even at the back end, just the amount of innovation that we have there, right? Uh, so for us, in terms of an SLA that we as a company drive, it's, you know, uh, even the six nines is probably not good enough because you will have a Bank of America or somebody screaming, saying something has gone down on the network, right? So that's, again, I mean, innovation in core technology areas also is, is extremely important. It's just our ability to be able to operate our network 24 bar 7, 365 days without any glitches. And that calls for using our data better. So we have something, a concept that we're working on called self-healing networks, right? It's really supposed to monitor transactions across the globe, every country. If you look at our data centers, really huge, uh, you know, where we kind of uh, pretty much every country that we operate in, we're, we're monitoring transactions by the second, whether it is a fraudulent transaction, whether it is, uh, you know, just our network elements going down, whatever. A whole lot of analytics is, is actually generated and based on that analytics, we're actually trying to see if we can, you know, create uh, backups for backups for backups to ensure that the network doesn't come down, right? So that is, so it's not just the front end in terms of user experiences and being able to monitor accounts and so on and so forth, but just at the back end, the amount of, uh, you know, technology and the amount of, of, of uh, innovation that is really possible is huge. Uh, we also have problems of loss of data, for instance. So recreation of data is a, is, is a big challenge that we work on as a team. 
The other thing is about um, so recreation of, of lost data, you know, and that's a, that's a big technical problem, really, uh, for, for, for guys like ourselves to solve. So at the end, you know, at the front end, it might just seem you take out your card, you swipe it wherever, and it's supposed to work. But at the back end, there's just so much of, of, of uh, you know, uh, stuff that really goes on on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, uh, just, just to create uh, a seamless user experience in the front. Uh, and uh, you know, and, and and so much more. I mean, uh, we have we have these data centers. We operate about seven data centers across the globe. Uh, there's, there's a big one that we have in St. Louis and Kansas City. Uh, you know, in Bell, there's, there's there's a center in Europe, and so on and so forth. So for us, it's failing over to one of these data centers is something that we constantly monitor. How much of the traffic is going to be failed? You know, is going to be moving over, so that we have this seamless experience, right, time and again. Uh, and then we have a lot of our users pushing innovation as well for, for, for ourselves, right? I mean, where you have one of our key customers, for instance, a Bank of America or an American airline uh, who comes in, and more, more from a Bank of America standpoint, where he would, you know, the customers would like to monitor transactions that are happening on their network by the second to see if, you know, if you, if you look at, uh, you know, at fraud data, it's, 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 it has increased uh, substantially over the last few years. And I think just in India, it's about, you know, 730 plus crores, I think, in terms of identity frauds that have happened. So the bank, it is natural, would like to actually monitor, uh, you know, any kind of fraudulent transactions that are happening on their network. So there is a lot of analytics that we're doing. So if you've heard terms like bank in a box, analytics as a service, uh, you know, providing infrastructure as a service where I, I talked about the fail safe or, you know, the, the ability to switch over the infrastructure elements that we have at the back end, a whole lot of these terms are really coming in from the banking industry and the banking segment. And to me, it was just amazing to see the amount or the, the, the spaces in which we, 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 we operate in, right? And name a technology, and I kind of see that in this segment, whether it is, uh, you know, uh artificial intelligence, whether it is machine learning, where I talked about, you know, the, the uh, self-healing networks and stuff like that, or understanding data and being able to extrapolate from any consumer data to understand the consumer better than he himself or his family knows about, uh, you know, or, or the, the, the entire chatbot stuff, right, or, you know, and, and robotics. I think there's just so much that is happening in the financial space. And uh, we, within MasterCard, uh, you know, do realize the fact that we can't do a lot of that ourselves. So if you look at the last six to eight years, the number of acquisitions that we've had as a company uh, across multiple geographies has have been into key technology segments, right? Whether it is processing, we've acquired a company in India, uh, new data, you must have heard about that company that MasterCard acquired, which is really into the space of, uh, you know, uh, artificial intelligence and robotics to kind of understand fraudulent, uh, you know, behaviors better. Uh, we, you know, so if you look at it, they're all very niche technology uh, investments that Mastercard's made. So, in 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 my little judgment, I think it's a. Uh, you know, the, the space that we're in is extremely, extremely innovative uh, in terms of just the amount of, 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 of dollar available here. I mean, if I look at just the emerging markets, I think that's close to about uh, $15 trillion in terms of just the transaction value that we have at this point in time, and they expect that volume to, to double by 2025. So uh, just in the emerging markets, I think the opportunity is huge. And even if I look at just ourselves as a card company, I think today we have 85% of the population which is still, uh, you know, uh, outside, uh, don't even have bank accounts or, uh, you know, uncarded uh, segments. So we still have a huge opportunity, and we as a company are looking at moving towards this, uh, you know, making, making, making the world cashless. That's, that's the motto and dream that we have, and uh, that's what we're driving towards. So just, uh, you know, uh, just the little that I've, I, 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 the message that I really have here is to say, that uh, there's just so much that's happening, and there is not a space that uh, is not tied into the financial segment today, like I said, analytics, like, you know, everything that I've already mentioned. And if I look at, uh, you know, core banking, right, in terms of uh, what they are doing, uh, you know, I think the, the fintech space is really taking over a lot of those niche, interesting spaces around, and the bank is really moving to the back end at this point in time in terms of doing, you know, 
managing the vault and a, a, a whole lot of the functions that the banks do, right? And I think the future is really for the fintech, and I, I, I truly believe this is going to be a, a, a revolution of sorts where, you know, a lot of the numbers that I talked about are going to be shared between multiple of these companies, and everything, uh, you know, uh, that the opportunities that we have are, uh, you know, are, are, are something that we'll have to chase together. And to this effect, I think if we look at just the Indian geography and the, and, and the segment, Mastercard has something called the start path, right? So we actually invest in interesting, uh, you know, companies uh, and interest, interesting startups uh, that we can collaborate in, and not necessarily from a, a standpoint where we're pulling them into our immediate ecosystem, but we kind of allow them to operate, uh, you know, with whatever stake we take in the company, uh, but really monitor, uh, you know, that space very closely. And you must have heard of uh, a company called Razorpay, where we have uh, you know, some stake in. There are a number of others that we're looking at from the Indian market. Uh, we've invested in a company called Casisto, which is a set of guys that have created the Siri app. Uh, you know, if you guys have used it. Uh, so yeah, there are, so there is a lot that is happening not in, you know, in, in, in core technology spaces that we're looking at because we believe a lot of those are what are going to make the difference to the experiences that consumers and customers have tomorrow. Um, well, that's about all I had. Uh, it, you know, it was a quick message that I really wanted to give you about the importance of uh, the fintech you know, ecosystem to, to players like ourselves and what we're trying to do in some of the spaces. Thank you.